Thank you, Craig. Look, it's great to be here for our, um, our fourth industry conference. Um, I'm not going to keep you too long. I'm just going to do a little brief overview of the industry and then lead into uh, Andrea, who's going to be discussing some of the market insights work they've been doing over the last couple of years. It's been really interesting to hear the reflections uh, and the introductions from Lucy and Jan around how far the industry's come in the last uh, quite short space of time. Uh, we've literally gone from a tent to a conference centre. Uh, we've also gone from quite a small industry uh, really trying to find its way to an industry that's in a very powerful position. We've got three very large exporting groups now, all rapidly growing. We've got a huge amount of interest at the um, domestic and small scale industry level in cheese makers, yogurts, gelatos, fresh milk. It's absolutely a fantastic and exciting time um, to be in the sheep milking industry. So when we sort of look back and reflect on where we're sort of getting in that journey, where we're sort of going that journey, um, I'd first like to acknowledge a lot of the support um, for the industry. So within the scientific community especially, who are doing a whole lot of research, uh, which we actually are able to use to move ourselves forwards a lot faster. Uh, we can't take this for granted. It's a really big opportunity for New Zealand, um, having that scientific powerhouse behind us. I'd also like to um, acknowledge a few of the service providers. Um, Dee Laval, who's a major sponsor um, of this event today, they've been a fantastic support to us um, during our first few years of milking. And thank you, Eric, for making the effort to get all out to New Zealand. Uh, I'd highly recommend their gear. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, and also uh, Milk Test New Zealand, Ag, uh, Ag Research and Mass University, all fantastic supporters of this exciting industry. So I guess when we look back, what has been the major shifts that has meant this is becoming such an exciting industry for New Zealand? I mean, New Zealand's had sheep for over 100 years and sheep produced milk um, the entire time. But why are we now looking at building such a massive industry here? In my view, there's been a couple of major game changes. The first one has been the rise of alternative dairy. So as consumers have really started to differentiate milk, there's become a huge opportunity here. Consumers are actually understanding that not all milk is made the same. That the protein, the composition, um, the fats are all very, very different. And what we've seen is that there's actually a premiumization within the dairy category around alternative milk. And that represents a fantastic opportunity, especially for sheep milk. Um, and the numbers that you see in this sort of space are really high. Um, one of the recent reports I've read is showing that there's about a 30% growth in alternative dairy uh, within Asia. That kind of number is absolutely massive for a food industry, and it's opportunity that New Zealand is very well positioned to take advantage of. The other one is the um, availability of globally competitive uh, genetics. So as it's been canvassed quite a lot, uh, New Zealand hasn't had access to the type of genetics that have been milked globally. This is a huge constraint on our farming systems, as most of the farming systems are highly dependent on the revenue on a per u basis. And without the decent milk volumes, it becomes a very, very difficult operation to run. I'll come back to this uh, shortly. Uh, but basically, it's a transition from classic meat and wool sheep to a proper dairy sheep. Very exciting times. So when we look at the industry, what are we trying to achieve? What are our major constraints when we're sort of focusing on? I've always liked to simplify it down to four key pillars. Uh, the first one is around the building supply aspect. And in my view, it's a very, very much a function of our genetics and our farming systems. On the front side, on building demand, it's a function of your markets and your products. But the key connection that we cannot forget as an industry is how closely these two need to be aligned um, for what we're trying to do here. If you're trying to do high value niche products, you need to have a very, very close alignment between your supply side and your demand side. And I think that's what you're doing very well as an industry. We're seeing a lot of fully integrated models coming in and it's a fantastic opportunity for us. So if we go through each of these pillars in a little bit more detail, um, genetics, so we see a lot of stuff um, in terms of what the Europeans and other parts of the world get in terms of their milk volume. Uh, you see some numbers that are astronomical, 1,000 litres per ewe. I like to come back to large-scale flock averages. Um, we often see somewhere between 350 and 450 litres um, in large-scale flocks, uh, depending on how you adjust for the lamb rearing system. For us, this is a really big opportunity. We've able to actually been able to only very recently import these genetics into New Zealand. They've all arrived. Um, those are some of our lambs on the ground. And this come upcoming season, we're the first time that we've really started milking these European high-performance genetics in a New Zealand context at scale. Uh, very, very exciting times the industry, and this could be an absolute game changer for us. But genetics is not going to be a magic bullet. Um, there's still a huge amount of work to be done on the farm system side. Now, it's fair to say there's a huge amount of interest from New Zealanders on the farming system side of sheep milking. New Zealanders absolutely love farming. We love sheep, we love milk, um, love the whole thing. We still need to do a lot of work on what this farming system actually looks like. So at a very broad level, there's three sort of ways that you could do this. Either fully outdoor, some form of hybrid system, or a fully indoor. Now I'll start at the end of the fully indoor. 
This is used quite extensively um, around the world, particularly where you have very high um, environmental challenges, either it's very, very hot. There's also often an availability of um, mixed rations that New Zealand doesn't necessarily have at the same cost uh, structure. In my personal view, I think as an industry, we're more likely to end up in this space here, either fully outdoor or some form of hybrid where we have a limited amount of shelter um, for our sheep when they're in high performance systems. This also means we're able to bring our pastoral advantage um, to bear when we're in these kind of spaces. So I think that's a really good area that we're looking at. And as an industry, um, most suppliers are in this kind of space here. The really critical bit about these models is really going to come down to how much milk volume you can get per year. Um, what we're sort of thinking is around the outdoor, fully outdoor model, somewhere between that sort of 250 to 350 litre is going to really produce a really high value economic return for farmers. Um, in a hybrid system, you're basically adding a lot more costs, so you need to get a um, higher milk volume to represent that to, and to cover those additional costs. This is a really, really exciting time. We'll be trialling um, at Spring Sheep uh, both of these two models on 40 hectare sites in the Waikato, um, and we really encourage you to come out and join us on that journey. Um, to, we'll be doing an open day uh, later on this year, and we'd love to take you around those farms, talk about very openly all of the challenges we're facing, all of the things we're thinking through, because one of the most powerful things about this industry is how collaborative everyone is. And if we're all really, really collaborative, it puts an innovation pressure on all of us to keep improving. Because fundamentally, we're not competing against New Zealanders in farm systems, we're competing against Europeans. It's New Zealand's opportunity to get ahead of the rest of the world, and there's a very real opportunity there for us to be global leaders in sheep milking. The next one is products. Um, the sheep milk is a fantastic um, base ingredient to work with when you're making dairy products. So at one end, you can do, um, there's a very established um, high value cheese market globally. Uh, which a lot of New Zealanders are making beautiful cheese, uh, a few of them are already acknowledged today. Um, you can also make some beautiful luxury products. The fat structures of sheep milk are absolutely stunning to work with if you're playing with something, say, gelato. There's also a really good little area around luxury and nutrition, where you have a little bit of that flavour piece, but you also start talking about more of the nutrition elements, and that's where a yoghurt sort of fits in that space quite well. And then at the other end, going full nutrition, you're talking about powders and tablets. Um, again, uh, New Zealand sheep milk has a really interesting opportunity there, and one that's being supported by a lot of science in the background. One of the things that I have been hearing a lot though is that there's a massive processing constraint uh, for actually getting sheep milk products made. I have to admit I probably disagree with that. Um, New Zealand is actually, uh, has 439 registered dairy RMPs um, and all the expertise around that. So when you actually think about it, there's a massive amount of expertise right at your fingertips in New Zealand. There's also a huge amount of capacity um, within these sites uh, to manufacture products. So at Spring Sheep we've trialled at commercial scale 16 different products we've never purchased a processing site or invested in any of them. So you can actually do this, providing you can put the pieces together and create a business case for these dairy uh, site operators. And sort of at a very conceptual level as an industry, if you, this is um, a, a smile curve. Uh, basically, um, if you look at where you're building value in an industry, in a commodity oriented industry, it really comes from your manufacturing step as opposed to your technology or your marketing step. And this is where um, in Fonterra's more commodity side of their business, they're spending a lot of their time and resources on building larger and larger manufacturing sites. Basically get their cost production down as low as possible and have a much, um, and create their margin through that. When we look at the New Zealand sheep milk industry though, I think our opportunity is going to be quite different. Um, so this is a non-commodity non model here, uh, where you actually create your value through your technology. So that is through understanding your product, understanding attribu attributes you can use, creating high value products and technology at the farm level as well. And then at the other end, telling fantastic stories about marketing, really understanding your consumer, telling your stories properly, and creating value at that end. I don't think that in the early years of our industry, um, the manif will be going for high scale, um, economies of scale style um, business models. It'll be about generating value at those two ends of the, um, of the value chain. And the last key um, pillar for me, and I'll be interesting, Andrew, shortly, is around consumers. You absolutely have to start with your consumers. And I get a phone call every single week from someone who's already sort of found some sheep they could milk, ready to get a farm down, and they go, oh, well, what am I going to do with my milk? You have to think the other way. You have to find your consumers, understand your marketing opportunity, line it up with a processing opportunity, and then build your farm. And look, I'm happy to provide milk to someone who's keen to get into this, but doesn't have anything to work with as an ingredient, and we've done that with a number of different groups. If you're looking to get into this industry, always feel free to give us a call, happy to talk through some of our experiences in different products, and potentially create some opportunities for you but please engage.